Hello, Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. I'm going to walk through the demo version of our core market model. This is the analytical model that we use for our analysis of the mortgage industry. And I'll take you through some of the key features in the underlying model. And it's worth reflecting on that this is quite a large model, so I won't run to touch everything today, but we'll look at some of the key features. We'll uh, switch across to a pivot table view. And what we have here is the average output from the model looking at all mortgage households in Australia. There's 100% of them in the story at the moment. The average mortgage outstanding based on the surveys that we get from our households. We've marked to market the properties and that's based on today's values. We have an average loan to value ratio of just over 73 74%, an average loan to income ratio, 339%, an average 30 day probability of default at 1.6%, the average owner occupied debt service ratio, in other words, 17.2% of income going to service the debt at current levels, and the average price to income across the portfolio. Now, what we can do is look at this through all sorts of different lenses. So for example, one of the lenses that we have available to us is our core segmentation. So if we drop our core segments into the picture, that's now changed the view somewhat. We're still looking at all mortgage households, but now we're looking across our different household segments. And you'll see the relative distribution of those segments now within the model. So the disadvantaged fringe and the battling urban are the ones at the top, that's quite a big selection, the mature stable families, the multicultural establishment group, rural families, some stressed seniors and wealthy seniors, what we call mainstream suburban, suburban mainstream, and then the young affluent and the young growing families. This segmentation has been proved stable over the last 12 years of been doing our modeling. So we use this as a way of looking at the differences. But look at the difference of outcome in terms of the average mortgage outstanding, whilst the average across the total portfolio is 406,000. Very significantly, so exclusive professionals have the average mortgage well over the million dollars. The suburban mainstream, just a little bit above the average, uh, but quite a few other households below. But it's worth noting that young growing families have a lower than average mortgage, whilst the young affluent group has a much higher than average mortgage. So it does vary by group. And you can look at the same in terms of the market to market on the property side as well. So the average is 555,000 across Australia, but there are some big differences. And this is translated then into some different loan to value ratios. So for example, you can see that the highest LVR actually is sitting in our multicultural establishment group the young growing family group at 83.7 is also pretty much up there. And then we've got the young affluent at 81.4%. So they are the ones with the highest loan to value ratios, whereas stress seniors and uh, even wealthy seniors have much lower loan to value ratios. If we move then across to loan to income ratio, so this is looking at the difference between the loan and income. And we can see that it's young affluents who are the uh, household group with the highest loan to income ratio. That's a more risky view uh, compared with some of the lower LTIs. Uh, you've got young growing families at 432% uh, uh, and uh, you can see then that some of the other groups are relatively low. But what's interesting here is the exclusive professional, which is the top end of the market, still has a high loan to income ratio. We can look at the debt service ratio as well. So this is essentially looking at the proportion of income required to service the current mortgage at current interest rates. And you can see that the debt service ratio varies. So the highest is multicultural establishment at 24 and exclusive professionals at 25. And then we go up to 32 for young affluence, young growing families at 22, a little bit below, and then the others lower. So these vary by segment. And you can also look at the price to income ratio as well. So again, some quite interesting differences in terms of the different price to income, but it's worth highlighting that the young affluent stand out as that group which has the highest price relative to their relatively strong incomes. 
So that's one way of looking at our data. Another way of looking at it is to be able to look at it across our property portfolio segmentation. Now this is now looking at first-time buyers, those who are holding property, those who have refinanced, those trading up and those trading down. And we see some, again, differences in outcome. So the mortgage is varying. The trading up group has the largest mortgage at 831,000. The trading down group has a smaller mortgage. And that's because, of course, they are looking to release equity rather than to take a larger loan. And the others are somewhere in between. Notice the first time buyer, the average first time buyer's mortgage is around 511,000. Then if you look at the mark to market, you can see, again, differences trading up, biggest mortgage, uh, and also the biggest mark to market, so the largest, more expensive property. Uh, the holding group is tending to be at the bottom end of the range, and that's reflected across the loan to value ratios as well. So there's some quite interesting differences there. With the refinance group sitting at around 72, the first time buyer at 85, but this is interesting, quite a few people who are holding uh, property, and there was no intention to move up or move down, also have a high loan to value ratio. Some of that is to do with the fact that values for those properties have not grown as quickly as some other groups. We can look at the loan to income ratio again and see some differences there between the different groups. Um, loan to income ratio for the first time buyer, five, four, seven, it's pretty high and trading up. So they're the ones who are extending themselves. And as a result of that, probably the default is at two for first time buyers, 2%. So that is the likelihood of them defaulting in the next 12 months based on the current economic scenarios that we run. And the other PDs are a little lower. We can look at the debt servicing ratio and we see then that first time buyers on average are higher at 27.8% compared with the others. And the price to income is also somewhat higher for first time buyers and also to the group trading up. So it's interesting to see the contrast that you get with different types of households. Now another lens that we can also apply is to begin to look down across the region. So this is the average across Australia again, but we can also drop down into particular areas. Let's go down to the central coast and have a look there. Okay, so on the central coast, the average mortgage is 738, the average mark to market is over a million, Average loan to value is 73.9. The loan to income is 527. The debt servicing ratio is 26. And the price to income is 757. Probably the default 1.9%. Now, if we then apply a segmented lens on top of that, we soon discover that there are some quite interesting things going on here. So let's home in on the probability of default. So, we notice immediately that the suburban mainstream group and the multicultural establishment groups and the young affluent groups, those three are actually sitting significantly higher than the average of 1.9. You've also got young growing families there as well. And if you look at that a bit harder, you'll see that some of the reasons why that's the case is that the debt servicing ratio is a lot higher. You can see there. That's 43%. In other words, 43% of income required of young affluents to service their mortgages. That's the highest in that group. We've also got the multicultural group, 33%. You've got the young growing families at 25%. As a result of that, uh, we can see that there is some level of stress within the Central Coast mortgage group but it's centered in, in particular segments. Now you can actually then go on to ask, where are those people living? And uh, we can do that by taking a different view. Let's take a postcode view. And this is the most granular level at which we actually hold data. Um, and there you can see some of the different postcodes and the different outcomes. So perhaps the most interesting here is that if you look down the list, you'll see that postcode 2103 happens to have uh, a pretty high score, 2.9 down at 2107. 
And we could also do that a different way. So rather than looking at postcode, we could actually drop the location in instead. And then that gives us the name of the location. So that 2.7 is actually at Collaroy. And the other one down there, 2.7, is, is Mona Vale. So that's a little bit of an illustration of the sorts of things that you can do with the model. There's a lot more, of course. There are about 100 fields that you can manipulate uh, in the underlying data. But it gives you a bit of a flavor of the way the model works and how we actually do some of the analysis that you see on the Digital Finance Analysis blog. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We might do some more of this on another occasion.